So hello, welcome to the bunker and welcome to one of the most highly anticipated cars for me of this year. The reason being, I've, I've been hearing about this car and seen various bits about this project over actually the last couple of years. And to have it here as one of the last cars that we've been filming in the bunker of 2020 is a real honor. And today it's all about setting context because on the outside of this car, it's very easy to just latch on to these crazy top speed figures. But this car is so much more than that. However, I'd like to get some of that early context out of the way. So by now, we've heard that this car is aiming to achieve 300 miles an hour and over. And in order to achieve that, it is incredibly light. The car is coming in dry weight at uh, just over 1300 kilograms. Now, to set some context of the power to weight ratio and the real performance of this car, I always like to compare it against benchmarks that the majority of petrol heads are familiar with. So take, for example, the Bugatti Chiron Supersport. Uh, that has a brake horsepower per tonne of 809. So 809 brake horsepower per tonne. The Hennessy Venom F5, and just process this for a minute, these are real words, uh, has a brake horsepower per tonne of 1,298. <laughs> just, just wrap that around your mind. It's, the, the figures are absolutely absurd. And one final and significant spot of context before we delve deeper into the finer details. There are five driver modes. The top tier one is F5 mode, uh, which unlocks all 1,817 horsepower. But in order to unlock that, Hennessy will put you through a test in order to receive a license. And this is a proper test that you have to pass in order to be qualified as a customer, even if you buy the car, qualified to unlock F5 mode. It is that bonkers. And today we're going to run through how that's been achieved and how this car is much more than just a top speed car because it's also about driving enjoyment and driving dynamics and uh, being a much more complete driver's package than just going for big numbers. Okay, so oddly I want to start with one of the smallest but arguably one of the most significant details of the car. You see, for any of you familiar with Hennessy, they've been tuning cars for 30 years, and so you might be familiar with the now iconic Hennessy script. But you see, this car, the F5, is Hennessy's own car. Massive deal for any brand. Uh, from the ground up, blank sheet of paper, nuts and bolts up, this is all Hennessy. So together with a new car, they also have a new logo. And this here is it. Now, while that's a cool story in itself, the actual logo itself has a story. And this is a theme which runs through this car. Everything you look at isn't just a thing. It's a cool thing. And this thing is made of three microns thick aluminium, meaning if I was to hold it in my fingers and turn it sideways, you would barely be able to see it. The advantage of that is that you can still have a high quality logo and inlay it underneath the clear coat. Very trick stuff. Okay, the next big story on this car is that of carbon fiber. Now bear with me, because I know carbon fibers in the supercar, hypercar world is a generic story almost these days. But on this car, not only is it incredibly practical, but it's essential, it's functional. Take, for example, the front end. The whole nose is made from a single piece of carbon fiber. Now, while that's an incredible feat of engineering in itself, one of the reasons being is that you'll notice there are no shut lines. There's no join lines on the front of the car. Now, when you're going for ultimate high speed, that is, of course, a massive contributor to the reduction of drag, helping a car sort of cut through the air more easily. Not only is the whole front clamp stuck one single piece, it even extends, look, all of this, all the way down here. This is one piece of carbon. The engineering involved to make a piece of sculpture like that is fantastic. And then splitter here. Now, while these two parts are separate from each other, the interesting thing about the splitter is that it forms part of the fundamental structure of the car. And that is engineering, which is taken very much from race cars. So this part here and all of this, once again, single piece of carbon, really trick stuff. And the carbon story is only going to get more important as we walk across this car, particularly around the back. Things get berserk. Okay, just quickly on the topic of detail, if you stand back from the car and look at the headlights, they do actually resemble an F, just by the way that they are uh, laid out, F4, F5. And then if you drill down further inside them for extra detail, there is also the original Hennessy logo script that sits just in the light cluster there. Very cool. LEDs for lightweight, obviously. Speaking of lightweight, moving back towards the wheels and brakes. So. This has a staggered setup. We've got 19-inch alloys at the front, 20-inch at the rear. 
interestingly, once again, everything's about detail. So we've got the new Hennessy H logo here contrasting against the original Hennessy script, which is written on the brake calipers, which conveniently leads me on to the six piston carbon ceramic brakes at the front, four at the rear. And the tires are Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s. Now, ultimately, when this car goes for its uh, ultra high speed. The rig that Michelin developed these tires on is an aviation grade <laughs> rig in order to simulate the ultra high speeds which this car will be ultimately achieving. And keep in mind the aviation theme for later on because when we hop inside the car, there are some quite nice details which tie in to that quite nicely. Okay, so I never thought I would make a feature of a wing mirror stalk, <laughs> but at 300 miles an hour, things change. So this stalk here is actually made from a solid piece of carbon fiber. Now it's, it's important to say that because most carbon components are quite hollow, they're quite thin, but at 300 miles an hour plus, obviously there's quite a lot of resistance on this. So it, in order to achieve this, they've made it solid, thick, and then they've just drilled through it, cored through it in order to put the cabling in there. Again, I think there's so much story about every component, which once you've learned about everything, you start to look at the car in a different light. Every single thing has its purpose, because as I mentioned, those sorts of speeds, things change. Now, while we're here standing over the roof line, this really highlights the carbon turbo carbon cell that it's built around. Just the tub on its own weighs just 86 kilograms. Imagine that for the whole cell. And the way that it's built, again, is to minimize the amount of shut lines, particularly obviously on the exterior of the car. So when you're looking here on conventional cars where there would be fairly substantial shut lines here, they begin to start much further towards the rear after the air has sort of hit it and channeled over it. It's all about efficiency and reducing drag to its bare minimum. Just quickly, on this wide shot, you might notice that fundamentally the car has a sort of wedge shape where it gets sort of wider at the back and then has that sort of chopped off rear. That fundamental profile is for higher speed stability. Speaking of which, uh, there is quite a subtle integrated spoiler here. Now, Hennessy are, are telling me that when the car becomes fully available, there will be a track pack where this whole section here comes out and you can bolt in the sort of enhanced aero pack where you might have a more exaggerated wing possibly an enhanced diffuser and front splitter. But right now, this is configured in its sort of high speed mode for less drag. Okay, so welcome to the business end of the car. This is an appropriate time to tell you what's in the name. So Venom F5. Now F5 is the highest tornado rating. So in terms of the most power, the most wind speed, 318 miles an hour, which is quite appropriate considering how fast this car should be able to go. But I just think when you learn that, I think it's such an appropriate name for this car because it is all about just extreme power, just this unstoppable force. Now then, talking about power, just remember the top figures of this thing. 1,817 horsepower and 1,617 Newton meters of torque through a twin turbocharged pushrod V8. Now I'd say those stats because what the rear of this car is all about is heat management. So, and again, tying in the uh, story of carbon fibers we began with at the front of the car, remarkably, and just bear with me here, the majority of the rear of this car is a single piece of carbon fiber. And if you're staring at this thing here, but it's full of holes and there's all sorts of various shapes going on, watch this. So all of this here, from all of this section, all the way up to this line, all the way around the exhaust here, all of this, even this very posh cheese grater here. This is all made of a single piece of carbon. So once this has been forged, it then comes out, gets placed into a jig, and then all of these holes here then get carved out of it after it's been made. Now, the holes are all to do with heat extraction. So if we look how the air flows over and importantly through the car, where it goes in, based on the front and side air intakes, the air also has to go out. So there's also a hidden detail, which you might not be able to see until you get up close, but there's also extraction between the lights there. The amount of detail when you get up close to it is remarkable. And also, I'm not sure if the camera's doing it justice, the stance of this thing, it is so wide. And to think that from here, all the way around, one single piece, and it's only when it reaches the rear diffuser that things sort of separate. Fun fact as well, on the Hennessy logo here, this is a 3D printed component. It's a really subtle detail, but it's got this tapered effect. So think of it as like a sort of scaled down vol 
Kano shape. The idea is that the wider base provides more stability and then they will chop it in half, dip it in paint and then skim it back to reveal the Hennessy logo there. So I just think these small details, it might not seem a big deal, but I think when you start setting context as to just how much engineering and effort has gone into something as simple as the badge, imagine how much R&D and attention to detail has gone into the overall car. Now back to heat management. I've seen pictures of this thing throwing out flames to about here. <laughs> so needless to say, this area gets disproportionately hot. So this plate around here is super trick. Underneath this coating is high temp carbon. So that in itself is designed to resist high temperatures. However, Hennessy have gone and coated that carbon in a substance called Cerakote, which is the kind of thing that you would find that would line the likes of a gun barrel. That's the kind of heat that this thing will deal with. So all of this stuff is designed for a purpose to deal with heat and channel air in and out of the car as efficiently as it can possibly be achieved. Okay, I'm going to discuss the most incredible engine bay that I've seen in quite a while. Excuse me while I uh, awkwardly position my zip because I'm going to be leaning over this wonderful car. Um, I think that the number one thing in here is scale. It, it almost seems like someone's drawn a caricature of an engine because the scale of every component is so massive. Uh, it's more akin to a sort of offshore powerboat engine. The lines, the braided hoses, everything's like this. It's absurd, and then I think, weirdly, what sets more context than possibly anything other than the size of the turbos, which look the sort of diameter of your average hot hatch wheel, is the size of the clamps. This gives you an idea of just how much pressure is running through this thing just by those clamps alone. The fuel rails, these have been uh, referred to as the sprinkler system <laughs> because they deliver so much fuel. And the cooling, they are hoses. They're not lines, they are actual hoses. It's incredible. Packaging as well. For a push rod V8, they would normally sit quite high, but they've managed to package it so low. And again, bearing in mind that this isn't a car that's just about achieving top speed. Mounting an engine low provides a lower center of gravity, which therefore makes it a better driver's car too. Look at the, the valves. <laughs> These turbo valves are absolutely huge. Yeah, it's all about pressure and scale and I, I guess feeding it, feeding it with water, feeding it with fuel. It's unreal. It's honestly, I'm not sure if the camera's doing it justice, the scale of it all. The turbos are almost a joke. I don't actually believe they're real. <laughs> that's, that's so big. And these, so these are suspension braces. So oftentimes the forces of the suspension would be put through the chassis lower down here. But on this car, they're mounted all the way up and the shock is delivered through the top of the tub here. Okay, open the butterfly doors. Not only do they look awesome, but also they're handy for entering and exiting the car. Now then, we're really at the business part of this vehicle. Do you remember earlier on when I said I would touch on some uh, aviation theme stuff? Well, check out the steering wheel. I mean, it, re it really looks like it is straight out of a plane. And more so is the instrument cluster in front of me. When I say it is like something out of a fighter jet is because there's been a lot of inspiration, in fact, research into the interfaces in fighter jets. And we now have the resulting screen in front of us. In fact, I don't know if it's just me, but I can actually also see some sort of Star Wars inspired stuff here. You know, the targeting system in a TIE fighter? <laughs> it looks just like that. Everything you in interact with, it's just so tactile. Now just listen to this. You ready? It's really hard to convey the tactility and feel of something on camera. But take it from me, the actuation of these paddle shifters is so satisfying. So once again, connected to single clutch, seven speed SEMA gearbox uh, to deal with all of that torque. But I can imagine slamming through the gears in this, the way it feels is rifle bolt, it's phenomenal. Okay, and then the five driver modes, which I was speaking about earlier, are toggled with this green switch here. So we have wet, Sport, Drag, Track, and the uh, license only F5 mode. The culmination of all of these parts and all of the story, and particularly after looking in the engine bay, what 
1,817 horsepower feels like, I can only imagine. But what else is actually mildly terrifying is the fact that the car weighs so, it's just so light, just over 1,300 kilograms dry. Going back to the details of the car, in fact, I'm just gonna close my door so I can highlight something. Check out this, we've got the detail on the uh, door handle here. When I say door handle, in, in order to open it, it is a sort of touch sensitive button there. It doesn't even depress, it's just a very light touch. And a very subtle detail, which you can't see, is that this door handle here is actually floating. So it doesn't connect with the door here, it just sort of floats. It's cool, and all of this, I mean, this as well, that is just the bare carbon roof clad with Alcantara. And you can see this whole exposed tub all flows around here and inside, there is a mixture of both matte and satin carbon to sort of create that contrast. And then down here, where it says F5, this is actually a small screen and it is a touch screen. So you can swipe up and down on this in order to control your aircon and it becomes a really simple interactive screen. I mean, we've got Apple CarPlay here on a big Alpine screen. So you can use Waze or Google Maps and on the topic of practicality. What I quite like is that the glove box has been moved from the traditional space in the dash here to down here on the passenger side footrest. So that is your glove box there, this sort of miniature carbon fiber cave lined with Alcantara. And then really trick feature, but instead of just stif sticking mats in, in the very design of the tub itself, they have created a recess where custom mats sit flush within the tub. This is what I'm talking about with this car. It's all tiny details, but they're all greater than the sum of their parts. When you experience it as a whole, all these little things add up quite nicely. Okay, as with everything in this car, even the seats are custom made. They're not bought in carbon seats. These are developed by Hennessy. Ultra lightweight, super thin, but to maintain that quality and comfort, they've also sourced leather from Scotland, in fact. So all of this is tanned and sourced from Scotland. And it's just a beautiful place to sit, even though it is quite Spartan, it's quite pared back. You don't get in it and feel like it's a compromise, despite the fact on the outside, the car might suggest that on the inside, it's like ultra hardcore. To be in it is actually quite posh. And down here, this is probably the appropriate time to talk about the quantity that they're building of these cars. Just 24 F5s will be built, and you get a little plaque down here to indicate which chassis number the lucky customer owner is driving. And then through the back here, there's this awesome portal, this window to look back over that ridiculous engine. I mean, it's theatre through and through, this thing. Everywhere you look, there's story. Everywhere you look, there's detail. And it's quality, too. Everything feels so well put together, but importantly, it's the things you interact with. It's billet and gorgeous, and just, I'm not sure if the mic's gonna pick this up, but just listen to that. It, it, it's so satisfying just to move all of these switches. Feels great. Okay, one final thing to observe before we press this ignition button here is the carbon sill. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with most carbon sills in most supercars, they tend to be quite wide. So like a box section, which makes it a little bit difficult to get in and out of. What's remarkable about this car is not only does the majority of the sill sort of peel away with the door, so you've got this sort of recessed chopped out section here, but the actual fundamental sill itself is super thin, and yet they've still managed to integrate a pocket here for storage. I mean, that would be perfect for a phone, but as a result of getting in and out, I actually, that's definitely the thinnest carbon sill I've ever seen. All right, so there we have it, the first look at the incredible Hennessy Venom F5. What a remarkable machine. Uh, please leave any questions and comments below. I'd love to hear from you, see what you uh, think about this thing. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Ciao.